What's up guys, today in the channel we're going to build this airplane and I'm going to show you how to build it from beginning to end with all the details and I'm going to fly it right now. I'm going to start the building process printing and joining all the pages that confirms the plans. And then I start cutting out all the parts that we will use for our airplane. The biggest parts are the wings covering a lot of area of these sheets of foam board. When distributing all the parts on top of these sheets of foam board, I figure out that I will need at least three of them, size A1. The technique I use is very simple. I use this cutout as the templates and I use a marker or pen to transfer the shape. By the way, the foam board that I'm using is 5mm thick. You will also see the full list of the items and things you will need to finish this project in the description below. Using a hobby knife, I try to make the cuts as perfect as possible. This design is a modified version of the Flytest Simple Storage. The plans are different, but the techniques for building this airplane are exactly the same as Flytest. In the plans you will see these blue or cyan color lines that will represent the 50% cut through the foam board to make easier to bend. For the leading edge we need an extra treatment, because if you try to bend it all the way like that, it will break the material on the outside, so it's better to make the angle cut which is the same used for the ailerons or any other control surface. It is represented in the plans with this orange pattern. As you can see, we have our left wing ready. What I'm cutting out now are the spars. These are going to be inside the wing and they're going to reinforce them. In another sheet of foam board, we're going to cut out the other wing, but we're going to turn the template the other way around because we're going to cut the other wing and they have to be symmetrical. And taking the plans as a guide, I trace the lines to make this wing. And here we are taking a closer look at the inside of the leading edge. This V-cut is made to make it easier to bend the leading edge. If you bend it and it still offers a little bit of resistance, then cut a little bit more of the material. Now it's time to put the spars in place. These are going to make the wings very strong. Now it's time to cut the ailerons and to make the V-cut at the pivot point. This is a little technique that I have with the hot glue gun to reinforce the parts in place. Now I'm going to join both wings with some tape. Now it's time to join the other side of the spars with the bottom side of the wings. 
make sure to hold them down for about a minute for a successful bind. I would recommend using some weights. We still have to glue the trailing edge and after doing that, our wings are joined together. Our wing has its shape. It's almost done, but we still need to do some work. We have to make a small dihedral. That's going to be a very slight positive angle that will make the airplane more stable. Having finished with the wing, I start making the horizontal stabilizer. And now it's time for the vertical stabilizer. And now I'm going to finish the pieces from the fuselage and join them. And make sure that these parts, while gluing them, stay aligned. And I'm not talking just about the 90 degree angle of the walls, but also the longitudinal axis. Now we have to finish the rest of the parts to finish the fuselage and the tail. And before gluing the tail section permanently, I do a fitting test to see if it works. In the description below you will find a link that will take you to the web article that will have a lot more information including more videos explaining in detail some other things about this project. While gluing the horizontal and vertical stabilizers make sure they are very aligned to the fuselage. This step is very important. And now it's time to put the electronics. I'm going to use six servos. This airplane uses ailerons, flaps, elevator and rudder. We will also need at least four servo extensions. You will find an entire list of components and materials in the description below. Now I do the marks where to put the control horns and also do some opening in the material of the leading edge so that the push rods and control horns doesn't interfere with it. Before laying the servos down, I recommend using a servo tester to set them at their neutral position. Taking the servo leads through the wings is an uncomfortable process, but with the help of some wire or a string, you can do it. Since I'm going to use the flaps in this airplane, I'm going to cut the division between the ailerons and flaps. This is optional, since you can use only ailerons or flaperons, and that way you only need one servo per wing. In that case, the position of the servos should change to get the most mechanical advantage. Now let's create the push rods for the servos to move the control surfaces. 
In this airplane, because of the distances between the servos and control surfaces are so short, you can use any common wire. At this point, the servo under control surface have to be both at their neutral position. That way we can take an accurate measurement for the right size of the push rod. On one side of the push rod I make a C band, but at the other end I apply a different technique. I still have to put two servos in the tail section, so I connect them to some servo extensions and glue them in place. And now I want to make some observations on how the wing fits in there. Because the wing has a dihedral, I'm going to apply some hot glue at the edges of the fuselage, not to glue the wing, but to make them fit perfectly. These barbecue screws are going to be the anchor points for the rubber bands to fix the wing. And this is going to be the motor base cut exactly at the size of the fuselage. And finally, I'm going to place a landing gear, something that I don't do often in this channel, but finally I'm doing it. This plywood base would be to reinforce the bottom part of the fuselage, so that the join between the landing gear and the fuselage can stand a lot of forces. Finally, I put a tail wheel to have more control when taxing. And now it's time to set up the radio with the dual rates, mixes, and all of that. I just made a little mistake with the flaps. Both servos have to be oriented the same so that the flaps move in the same direction. Now they are behaving like ailerons. That can be solved by changing the orientation of one of the servos. And that's because they are connected together to the same channel using a wire harness. If they were connected to separate channels, that would be easier, because that could be done in the radio setup. If you want to know more details on how to set up your radio, you can visit the web article, where you will find more videos explaining everything you need. Right now, as it is, the airplane can fly, but I'm going to take a little bit more time to paint it and make it look very good. After that, I'm going to mount the last electronic components to the wings. This is totally optional. I'm talking about the strobe navigation lights, which you can find at joyplanes.com. They're back in stock, so check the link below. We are done. I just need to check the center of gravity of this airplane. To do that, I prepared the aircraft as if I was going to fly, 
with the battery and everything, and then balance it on my fingers or using a device for this purpose. The contact point should be where the plants indicated. Holding the airplane there will reveal if the airplane is balanced or not. It's better if your airplane is balanced or a little bit nose heavy, but never fly it tail heavy. Before going out to fly it, I have to register my drone in the local aviation authority. It's always better to fly legally and having all the permissions. Our bird is ready to go out and fly. This airplane has turned out very well. Its flight characteristics are very good for those who are learning to fly. It's super light, so light that you can even put more weight or bigger batteries and fly without any problem. This lightness means that it can fly very slow. If you add flaps to the equation, it can land very softly. I'm gonna keep working on an improved future version of this airplane. If you want to know more details of the build process of this airplane, don't forget to visit the web article of this project that will show you a lot of info. You will find other videos explaining how to set up the radios and other details including pictures and the plans download. If you like the model airplanes, general aviation, the RC hobby in general and electronics applicable to this, then you are missing a lot if you are not subscribed to this channel. For now, I hope you enjoyed this project and that you can build one yourself. Also don't forget to watch this video that explains how gliders fly and this other that shows when I encountered a helicopter wreckage in the mountain. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next project.